friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's video where I'm going to be talking about self-concept and one of the pillars of self-concept, which is self-care. Why this is important to your manifestation journey, whether you are manifesting a specific person, reconciliation with an ex, a new person altogether, a new job, better health, a better relationship with your family. I don't care what you're manifesting. I mean, I do care. I care greatly what you're manifesting, but I mean, like, it doesn't matter what you're manifesting. This applies to everything. It's a very important topic to cover. We're just going to dive just a little bit deeply into it today. Why am I wearing a hat? You might be wondering. I don't know why. I just, I'm wearing this cute little shirt. It looks good with the hat. And I was like, let me just record a video. And, um, and it's part of the outfit. I don't know. It feels weird wearing a hat inside recording a video, but it's part of the outfit. What do you want me to do? Package deal. So when I say the, the pillar, it's one of the pillars of self-concept. I'm talking about the four pillars of self-concept. Who came up with this, with this topic of the pillars of self-concept? I did right here. So I see the four pillars of self-concept as being your self-care, your sense of self, which is how you see yourself, your self-love, which is the relationship that you have with yourself, and then your boundaries. These are the four pillars of self-concept. And if you are working on these four pillars, and some of us need more work in a specific area than others, if you're working on these four pillars, then you are taking a holistic approach to manifestation, and it'll be a lot easier to manifest whatever the heck you want. The reason why is because everyone is you pushed out, et cetera, et cetera. I could do... I don't know. I, I started to say I could do a video on these four pillars, but talking about the four pillars, like giving them the justice they deserve, it would probably be like a multi-hour video. So I might break it into parts. I do have a, a self-concept workshop on my website. It's pre-recorded, but if you want to check that out, it's it's down there. People like it. I don't know. Um, and that's where I dive into the four pillars, but I may even do like a, a 2.0 self-concept workshop diving even more deeply into those four pillars and into additional things that I've, I've learned and discovered since that workshop was filmed. I don't know. Regardless, the first pillar is self-care. So you guys know on this channel, I do self-care Sunday. I come on here. Sometimes it's a live stream. If it's not a live stream, it's a live premiere. I'm here with you chatting. And as I'm chatting, it's a pre-recorded video where I'm doing skincare and stuff. Self-care is not skincare. I mean, for someone like me, that's part of it. I really enjoy skincare that is a part of my self-care but self-care is so much more than that i just use self-care sunday like the skincare thing as a way to talk about self-care but it's not but you know it's like it's part of it it's not all of it self-care at its core is the willingness to meet your needs mind body emotion spirit to not only meet those needs but to prioritize those needs typically at a baseline above all other things in your life. Why? Because everyone is you pushed out. So if you are not willing to prioritize your needs, why will anyone else? People go, oh my gosh, SP never makes me a priority. But then when we start peeling the onion, like in coaching sessions, when we start peeling the onion, we realize the person that I'm talking to never makes themselves a priority. So if everyone is you pushed out, if the way that we treat ourselves is setting the rules and standards for our universe, well, if I'm not being kind to myself, if I'm not prioritizing myself, why would SP or why would my coworker or why would my family or why would anyone else? Now, I'm not saying that you have to move through this life as a selfish jerk and you can never put anyone else before you. But if you are existing in a state of like, constant people pleasing, conflict aversion. Oh, I don't want to rock the boat. Oh, like everyone else's needs come before my own. You are setting a really crappy standard for your universe. For so many of us, and I'm speaking from a place of personal experience. This is something that I did for a long time. And it's something that I have to check myself on to keep me from doing it now because it's like it's part of my pre-programming and I'm reprogramming myself to, to default to something different and something better. But for so long, for me, when life got busy, whenever life got busy with work or school or friends or this or that, the first thing that took a hit, the first thing that I deprioritized in my life 
were things that mattered to me, were important to me, benefited me. What do I mean by that? I mean, let's say like I made too many plans in one week with my girlfriends and I was going out every single day and oh my gosh, I did not have time to meal prep this weekend. Like I used to work a job where I had to go to an office. I did not have time to meal prep. Oh no, I would spend that entire week just like living off of like potato chips and ramen noodles in the break room because I forgot to meal prep because I was so busy with all these social obligations for other people that I could not carve out two hours on a Sunday to meal prep for that week so I could have healthy and nutritious food for my work week. So for that entire week, I'm eating like nothing but carbs and sodium, you know, because ev everything else mattered more, okay? Um, I'm someone, and this is no secret, I've mentioned this in other videos, I am someone who like, I need eight hours of sleep. I need it. I can do life on like six or seven hours every now and then, but I mean, really, truly for myself, my mind, my health to thrive, I need eight hours of sleep. And I, in the past, would agree to like, oh yeah, I'll go out for your birthday person that I haven't seen in six years and who's never went out for my birthday, even when I invited you and who's never even wished me a happy birthday. But yeah, I'll go out for your birthday on a Friday night, even though I already have brunch plans with someone else the very next day. And I would end up getting like five hours of sleep and being exhausted. The person who I went out for their birthday, I spent all this money because you can't let someone buy their own dinner or drinks on their birthday. So I spent all this money on Uber and dinner and gifts and everything else for someone who, if we're being honest, doesn't give a shit about me. Truly, right? And I'm not saying you can never go out. I'm not saying someone has to kiss your ass 24 seven in order for you to ever do anything for them. But be real about how much stuff you can fit into one day or one week Week or one month and if you are over allocating your time to the extent that your self-care is suffering your health be it mental or spiritual or physical or emotional is suffering it's time to get real with how much you can do this is also going to give you an opportunity most likely to exercise improvement in your other pillars because what I have found more often than not when I start telling people no, when I start telling people no, I will not go do that thing, no, I don't have time for X, Y, Z, I found that they tried and still do to guilt me. People would try to guilt me and say, oh, come on, just come out for one drink. Oh, you'll be fine. Just, just grab a Red Bull in the morning. It'll be okay. F that. No, right? And again, every now and then, fine. Like if I go out on vacation, I might get a little less sleep than I normally would because I'm like, you know what? I want to see as much as I can, experience as much as I can. I'll sleep when I get home, right? Again, every now and then it's fine. I'm not saying that you have to be rigid and constantly say no, but I have found that by and large, a lot of people are almost like energy vampires and they will just take and take and take and take from you if you allow them to you. Now we're talking about life advice stuff. We're talking about mindset. Let's pull in some manifestation for a moment. Let's talk about how if everyone is you pushed out, if everyone is you pushed out and you allow yourself to be taken advantage of by friends or family, how is your romantic partner going to treat you? How is your employer going to treat you? If everyone is you pushed out and your spine goes missing, completely absent when a little peer pressure is put on you, what rules are you setting for your universe? What ideas are you impressing into your subconscious mind that are creating new neural pathways to manifest into your universe? Truly, let's get real about this. This is bigger than, woo, going out with someone who I haven't seen in six years. I did this stuff, you guys. There was... There was one girl that I literally had not seen in like 15 freaking years and she was coming into San Diego one night and, and knew that I lived in San Diego now. And she's like, let's go out for drinks. And I'm like, okay, it'd be kind of nice to see someone I haven't seen in forever. And she wanted to have a rager, a freaking rager. My gut, my intuition from the jump told me, don't go out with her. I had work the next morning. I had to be at work at 6 a.m. This is when I was in the military. I had to be at work at 6 a.m. My gut was like, girl, don't go out with her. Just go to bed, have a chill night, read a book, right? You haven't seen her in forever. 
right? You haven't spoke to her in years, and now she's like, oh, let's go out. It'd be so great to see you. Okay, never, this, this is someone who like did not come to my going away when I left for the Navy, did not check on me after I had all these surgeries. Like, you know, I mean, really, truly, like, I don't want to say didn't care about me, but, but didn't care about me in a meaningful way. And I was, my gut was telling me, don't go out with her. And I was like, oh, it'll be good. It'll be nice to see her. It'll be nice to see someone from back home. Oh my God. She was a drunken hot mess. And we ended up staying out until three o'clock in the morning. I had to be at work at 6 a.m. I was miserable the entire time. I felt like I was a baby babysitter. I was like, please God, let this bitch not get me thrown in jail tonight because she was just like, okay. So my intuition was like prioritize self-care and I shut it down. It like it, the, the peer pressure was coming from inside the house in that moment. And now like 10 years later, I'm older and I'm wiser and I do say, no to social obligations more often than I say yes. This is also because I'm an introvert. People are surprised when they hear this because I'm not socially awkward. I like connecting with people kind of one-on-one -on -one or in smaller groups. So people are surprised when they hear I'm an introvert because I guess I don't fit the stereotype, but I am an introvert and I do find my happiness and, and like my self-care, my, my recharging, my, my decompression in solitude or like in time with just my husband. Um, if you're someone who's extroverted, what your self-care looks like might be a little bit different. So for me, it's like setting healthy boundaries, not over obligating myself and really prioritizing my self-care. Now, what self-care looks like varies. I said at the start of this video, self-care is prioritizing, being willingness to prioritize your health, mind, body, spirit, emotion, Okay, it's like the four pillars of the self-care pillar of self-concept, okay? So what, the, what that looks like, what each of those areas, the mental, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, what self-care looks like is going to vary from person to person. Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, whether you are secure attachment or anxious attachment, whether you're a physical touch or a gifts giving, you know, acts of service, love language, like what, whatever it looks like, it's gonna depend on you. So for me, part of my self-care, it is skincare. It is getting eight hours of sleep every night. It is setting aside time every day for meditation and journaling, for taking my dogs for a walk. I really, really find a lot of joy in that. If you follow me on Instagram, I don't post about it every day because I don't wanna like inundate you guys with it, but I'll post my cute little dogs and I walking sometimes and that's always really fun. It's spending time in nature. I love hiking or just going to the beach, going out and being in nature, sitting in a quiet park somewhere. My self-care is also reading books. It is spending time with friends though like, planned and in smaller doses. My self-care is in cleaning. I feel physical stress if my house is like messy and unorganized, like it stresses me out. My self-care is in eating healthy and nutritious foods that nurture my body and also make me happy. Like I love experimenting with foods, right? That is my self-care. Your self-care may look entirely different. For you, it may be hopping on a Peloton for 45 minutes, or it could be, if you're an extrovert, going out for that late night with girlfriends and walking home with your heels in your hand. That might be part of your self-concept. If you're religious, it could be prayer or going to church or to a mosque, your self-care is going to differ based on who you are. But if you find that you are so focused on people pleasing, if you are so focused on jumping, you know, how high every time SP calls you, right? If you're manifesting a specific person to the point that your self-care is taking a hit over and over and over and over again. I want you to remember that everyone is you pushed out. And if everyone is you pushed out and you are not willing to make yourself, your health, your happiness a priority, why the hell will anyone else? If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Give it a give it a like. Whenever you guys like the videos, I look at this stuff. I look at my videos. Like I have metrics and analytics and the videos that actually get a lot of likes or comments or shares. I know this is a topic that matters to you guys and then I do more topics on it. Or you could always just drop a comment and be like, hey, good job. And then I'm like, thank you. And it does make me feel good because I put a lot of work into this stuff. Okay, bye friends.